I don't know where to start. Um, it's very difficult for me to um, remember everything that I've, I've been through over the last, um, last five years. This month, actually, is, is five years. Um, I, I, I got diagnosed uh, with stage, stage four lung cancer um, in t 2013. And um, at the time, the local doctor, they, they told me that they could just all um, offer me normal chemotherapy that would um, potentially um, lengthen my life by, by a few months. Um, that, that's what they told me. Um, and since then, I've been on a, a serious journey learning about myself um, and I, I learned a lot about disease and about cancer and how it develops and lucky enough I found this great man um, I think about two and a half years ago um, Joe Dispenza was brought into my life and I guess something with his teachings just, just, just clicked clicked with me um, and all the doctors around me um, were saying I, I, I should just accept my disease and that I was going to die um, <clears throat> but I, I, I didn't choose to believe them um, I, 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 I've had about 50, 50 brain tumours in my head um, and I had I think at ta time of diagnos diagnosis, both lungs um, had about, I think, eight tumours in, in both lungs, and that was in my, in my neck. Um, and then it was about th three months after I got diagnosed. Now, I do apologise for being incoherent, because I am a bit... I'm, I don't normally do these speeches. And I'm You're doing mad. very well. They're in love with you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just, I'm so happy to be here telling my story. You wonderful people. Um, uh, I, I lost where I was now. Um, they, they told sorry. you that you were going to have the condition to accept the idea that um, you had, were going to die in a few months. They wanted you to accept that. Yes, um, I, I, I felt something inside of me that this, this, this didn't sit right with me. Um, I, had, I had three young daughters. Um, my, my youngest, Harmony, um, she, was, she was only born um, about six months before my diagnosis. Um, so this, this just didn't sit right with me. I, I, I was looking at my girls and I was thinking, no, this is, this is not right. Like, they deserve a dad. You know, this, this is what kept me going, this is what fired me up. And every hospital appointment, the doctors were just negative all the time. Just, you know, there's, there's no real answer for you. Um, um, so it was, it was just all very, very negative. And then um, it was in um, May of this year, um, uh, it was um, un unfortunate circumstances that I, I lost my father um, and it was just myself and my father was, um, was, was, was in my house and my, my dad, he, he had um, a big heart, heart attack in the bedroom, uh, sorry, in the bathroom and I was the only person there with my father at that time so I just saw my dad lying there and I freaked out and I didn't know what to do. Um, I, um, I rang 999 and then I tried resuscitation on my dad. Um, but it was, a, it, was, um, it, it was something really serious in the heart. It, it, it could, couldn't, there was, there was no, no help basically. But that, that event um, just, just shocked me 
um, so, so much. Um, uh, just, just after this happened, um, I had a Joe Dispenza um, event already booked in. It was about 10 days after my dad's passing. And my, my, my father knew what I thought of this guy and what, what this work was doing for me. And I knew that he wanted me to, to come, to come to the, the, the event. Um, so I, 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 I pushed myself and I, I come to the event. Um, but then when, when I got back, I, I had to deal um, with the funeral arrangements. Um, and we, we had the funeral, and then I had an, another appointment up the Royal Marsden. Um, it was about a week after the funeral, and I had a big seizure um, in, in the hospital, in, in the waiting room. And I just, I, I, I come round in accident and emergency. Um, I think, or, or criti critical care I was actually in. Um, and the doctors at the Royal Marsden, they, they, they stood over me. And um, the oncologist, they, they looked at the images um, of my brain. And, and she looked at me and, and she said, the images are really bad. You should look at these. Um, they're, they're really bad. Um, you should start getting a, a rain, arrangements. You know, my, my, my brain was in a real, real bad state. I couldn't walk at the time. Um, it, took, took, it took me about a week to, to get my strength back to, to walk again. Um, but then I was just determined not to die. I, was, I, just, I wanted to live. I, I love life. Um, I love my daughters. And I didn't want to die. And I made a decision. My, my brother, he spent probably the best part of three months um, looking after me right, right, around my home. And all I'd done was meditate um, eight, seven, eight hours every day. Every day I, I meditated. And through this great man, um, he, he's, he's taught me how to connect to this, this field, this energy. And um, it was about a year and a half ago I, I f finally got this connection. Um, but uh, sorry, I, I do get a bit lost in what I'm, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm talking about, so I do, do apologise. Um, but, but since then, um, <coughs> um, after the doctor, the doctor said, um, that they, they wrote me off, basically, um, and in May I had a scan and the, my head was, had a lot of um, tumours and um, an edema um, in my head and they, they looked at this and the, and the doctors were, were like, you know, there's, there's no hope, basically. That's, that's what they were saying and I had a, I had a scan... I, I, I had, a, um, I had a, a scan in September um, after sort of getting rid of all the stress in my life, um, all the divorce process and everything that was stressing me, I, I got rid of and I, I just focused on meditating and connecting to this energy. And I was feeling it move through my central nervous system and I, I, move, I, I feel it go up and I can hold it in my, my attention now. And th this energy is, is just incredible. And it goes up into my heart. And where I've got all the da damage around my head here, I can now focus what my attention. And um, this energy goes to my, goes to my, goes to my head, where, where the, all the damage is. And it's, it's almost like I'm plugged into some electricity or something that's so, so powerful. And all I do is, I, I just, when I meditate, I focus on, um, on, on, the, on the field, and I, not the particle, because so, something very important I've learned from Joe, as soon as I think about anything stressful, um, if I think about my divorce, anything like that, that power just goes instantly. And it's not until then I get the focus back 
I feel the energy move up through my heart and into my brain where I'm healing. Um, I know for a fact I'm healing because I, I went to uh, the hospital in September and I was shocked. I, I wasn't expecting this at all. Um, <clears throat> I, I just walked in there like a, no, a, normal, a normal appointment and the oncologist there said to me, your results are excellent. And I was just like... <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, thank you, thank you. They, they, they said um, the, the results are excellent and you've got no active cancer anymore. And I, It's, since then, it's been a very emotional roller coaster, and um, it's a story that I know can help a lot of other people in their battles and their struggles, in what they're dealing through. And that's that's going to be my focus now: is is getting my what I've learned out through great man there, and trying to inspire other people on what can be done, what can really be done. You know, we, we, we have to stop um, thinking in the old paradigm and the, the, the opinions of, of uh, the, the old medical, medical paradigm has to go. And if I can be a part of that, then, then, then I will be. Absolutely. <laughs> I have some questions for you. <laughs> when did we first meet in person? It was at the cruise with Anita Morjani. Anita, Anita Morjani, that's right, Joe. Yeah. Came to this cruise I did with Anita Morjani, you know, who had her own experience where she had a near-death experience where her body died and she experience the realm beyond space and time, another dimension, and saw a new possibility, a new future, and brought that energy from that experience into her body, and she was healed. And my message that week was, you don't have to die to do that. <laughs> it was my message, wasn't it? Yeah. We have the brain scans to show that you can do it and still live in your body. And Miles came up to me when I was signing books on the stage, and he told me about his health condition, and he was so sincere and so real. And he said, I, I just, I, I want to believe in this. I have nothing else to believe in. And I said, buddy, listen, you got to trust me. You got to do the work. You just, you got to do the work. You, you hold the keys to your own prison. You got to do it. You got to get out. And he took it very seriously. And then... I think there was one event you came to, and then you were scheduled to come to Sardinia for the week long. Sardinia, you came to. Yeah, so we came to Sardinia to the week long. He did exceptionally well in that event, just like you, the same week long. Of course, it's always different, but a similar one. And he, sh he, he made great strides. He had to get beyond what the doctors told him, you know, the voodoo curse. He had to get beyond the time and three months to live. He had to get beyond the images of those brain scans that are embossed in his brain. He's got to get beyond this pain. He's got to get beyond this doubt, get beyond this fatigue. I mean, stage four cancer. He's got to get beyond the fear of the next seizure. All of that, he's got to make his way past all of that in, in making his way to that energy. To that frequency. And, you know, he was scheduled to come to a week long after that, but he was too sick to come. 
but he didn't give up. He didn't say, this doesn't work, I'm too sick to go. He said, I'm going to keep going. And we get, you know, little um, emails and information from his team leader to let us know how he's doing. And he's, every day, just, he's all in. He's not, he's not buying any of that stuff. He's believing in something else. And he reaches that point where he starts making a connection to that energy. And all of a sudden now, once that system switches on, now his body is connected to that field and those microtubules inside those cells begin to vibrate and shimmer. And he feels electricity in his body and his body is literally raising its frequency more towards wholeness and oneness. His body is literally increasing in frequency and creating more order or more order is reorganizing matter that's disorderly. In an instantaneous moment, as the energy moves up where it should be going, back up into his brain, he feels it. He knows that, what that what's happening there is he's experiencing some type of change. And when he feels it, what does he want more of? So he surrenders more into it and he invites it more and he lets go even more and he relaxes into it even more. All along, those microtubules are emitting more coherent light and information. And the body now is creating more life force. That's energy for him to heal with. And that's reprogramming the cells because as the cells feel this greater and greater electrical current, they're moving more into the present moment. And as they're moving more into the present moment, into the eternal now, his past doesn't exist. His body is moving out of the past into the present and he's having an instantaneous change in his body. He didn't say tumors go away. He didn't try to make them go away with his conscious mind. He understood that he had to surrender completely and his body would follow his mind. His body would respond to a new consciousness, a new energy. And to me, he is the living example of truth. To me, he is evidence of what's possible for all of us.